<clears throat> today feels like a good day for trying to nap something really bad. If I, don't, if I can't get anything from this one, I'll just pick up another one. This right here, this little, this, this thing here, that's a chair in front of me holding up another lamp. So now I got two lamps, so hopefully everybody can see everything. I was I was uh, requested to do something on film, but I forget I forget what it is already. I think I might remember as time goes on here. I thought this was a cool color when I picked it up. I think I got this from a debitage pile or something. It's heat treat, but I think I heat treated after the fact. After I found this piece. I think. So we'll see. I went ahead and I filed down the faces on this so it's been working pretty good I bifaced a bunch of stuff last night there we go so yeah smooth face is better than a dimpled face take that any way you want to all right, I've been reviewing my videos pretty closely lately, and I say a lot of things that can be taken in different ways. So you guys better get your minds out of the gutters. I'll be saying things that could be taken many different ways. As I try to explain what's going on as I learn, because I'm still learning. I don't have all the definitions down yet. I was going to make a definitions video or a series of definition videos way back in the day when I first started making videos. But I'm finding out there's still things that I didn't know what they were or didn't don't know what they are or the uh, definitions are evolving or missing things I don't know if I should be inserting my own experiences into these definitions or not it's kind of a weird weird environment I was able to get some pretty good results last night while I was bifacing with the billet. I ordered some more aluminum. So I'll be using a, a different types of aluminum billets. But I think this, this particular method like this, with the longitudinal axis in line with the center line, of the workpiece, kind of, sort of, is a, is a good strategy as opposed to at an angle like this. This is, this is kind of good for getting in between areas that are difficult to get to with this method, but as long as your platform is isolated, you can use this method. And the momentum on this longitudinal axis is different than the momentum on this arc here when you've got a bit of a pivot here there's no there's no real pivot maybe like that but here you've got a pivot point in the middle and you're striking this way I kind of like striking this way especially with natural materials uh, antler and moose moose antler and deer antler right I usually hit like this but I may start hitting this way I got a bunch of stuff put together, uh, a bunch of natural materials all boxed together now. I, I, I had these things all spread out in my shop, in my my uh, storage bins. 
and I consolidated them all. Now I got a big bin that weighs that weighs about 80 pounds, full of antler stuff. So now I was able to look at all of it, and it's glorious. Oh yes. So this summer, when I go back to Vermont here in a little bit, I'm going to start setting up a shop to where I can cut all that, sand it all down, make some neat little tools, maybe, well not maybe, but tool kits as well. That's coming up, just remind me if I start slacking. Where are the tool kits? Where are they? They're coming. So there's a yucky spot of concrete type stuff right there, but there's nothing up here. So I may be able to skin that off. I tried skinning it off from that side. Didn't work. Tried skinning, skinning it off from this side. Didn't work, so it's got roots in the middle. Doesn't want to pop out of there. So depending on how far that concrete root goes in, depending on how far it goes in, um, I may or may not be able to get something out of it. All right. Of course, it's always so that's always the case. I may or may not be able to get something out of it. Okay. I gotta think of a better way to explain things. Kevin's not here. I don't know where he went. Where's Kevin? It's like over 100 degrees inside. It's cooler outside. That's probably the reason. Only foolish humans are okay with sitting around in extremely hot places. It's ridiculously hot inside the shop right now. So attacking the concrete, what's the best strategy? Well, if you can, attack the concrete from somewhere that's easily napped, like from the good stuff into the bad stuff. That tends to work better than to creep up next to the bad stuff and hit on the bad stuff. But sometimes that's your only option Bad stuff does not like to be hit on the platforms because all the platforms do is crush on the bad stuff. Yep. I might have to lose a bunch of that material. The thickness. I don't want it too thin right now. Yeah, that's some heavy duty concrete. I did mention it's a heat treat, right? So that means the heat treat did not affect the concrete. It's a lot of times it does, but on this particular piece, it looks like it had no effect. It looks like the heat treat had no effect on the concrete. So there are exceptions, but usually, I would say usually, the heat treatment will soften this concrete up a little bit to get it to where it will chip. You know, why would I bother napping a small piece like this? Why would I do it? Because that's all that some people have. That's all they got. They go down to the river. Maybe it's two miles away. Maybe it's 200 miles away. They'll pick up some stones from the river and go, you know what? This is flint. But this is all I got. What am I going to do? I know. I'll just watch a Jet Crafty video. 
to see how to nap this really, really tiny, ugly looking little nodule. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Statistically, only 1% of you will do that. Most of you have insomnia and can't go to sleep. Right? Right. You know, guys don't do any napping. A lot of you guys you just like to hear the tap, tap, tap. Click, click, click. Or something like that. Can I put that on a stick and shoot it at an animal? Just like this? Yes, yes. Doesn't even have to be anything special. Will that cause some damage? I guarantee you that'll hurt. Even like this. You can put that on a stick. Yeah. Now, just because you can, doesn't mean that they did. I've seen some archeological digs where they dig up stuff that looks similar to this. And you can't really tell if it's natural forces creating this or humans creating this. You can with this particular piece. You can obviously tell that it's got some thinness to it, which is very rare in nature. But anyway, they'll dig up stuff that they can't tell what's naturally occurring or human. At least most people can't. They say they can. The archaeologists can tell. But that's when you start getting into the dicey stuff as to how old flint napping really is in this technology. Where was I going with that? Uh, just be careful when you're listening to some of these guys. Even though you can mount really crude stuff, it doesn't mean that they did, okay? Just because you can doesn't mean that they actually did. Humans are kind of funny in the way that they they like or dislike stuff. It's got to be, it's got to look a certain way, you know. They got this, humans have this thing about, eh, it just don't look right, it just don't feel right. I don't know, man. I suppose I could mount it like this and it would hurt do a bunch of damage but it just doesn't look right I think that's been going on for millions of years the way humans look at things is a lot different than what logic would dictate right I mean we all we all know the problems of humans not being logical So I managed to get some of that concrete off, but I don't know. I gotta see 13 minutes. I gotta figure out figure out where I'm going to release this big. Where am I gonna attack this big mass so it'll release out of there? I can't have too much on the front here. This base looks okay but I, I got a big bulge right here I was hoping to remove it but dang even with the heat treat it didn't go over the top I know I, I say a lot of I say a lot of good things about heat treat right it's so awesome but I still have issues with it I still have issues in many cases it's not a cure-all although it will it will help a lot. It has turned my stash of rocks into 90% nappable instead of like 60% nappable. I need to do some more heat treat here in a little bit. I need, to, I need to invest in a bunch of stuff, but the kiln, I think, would be a worthwhile investment first before I invest in some other stuff. I want a nice, fancy 
little traveling shop, right? A little mobile shop I can build up on a trailer or buy one of those covered trailer thingies, put a shop in there so I can go anywhere with it. That's an investment right there, but should I buy the kiln, a nice fancy kiln first? Heat treat this stuff with a programmable computer. Ah, oh, yeah, that felt pretty good. Finally, it's trying to knock down that concrete. Anyway, I got some investments I need to make. And my equipment, I probably should have bought a, uh, a trailer, at least the bed, before I bought my computer. That computer didn't really help me at all. Nope, nope. All it did was make it easier for me to surf the net. So I'm looking, about, I'm looking up stuff like how to make baskets in Russia. How to do green woodworking in Ireland or Scotland. Some of those foot powered lathes are pretty cool. I forget what they're pole lathe? Yeah, it's a pole lathe. I can watch pole lathe videos for hours. It just made it easier for me to get distracted. So I should have bought something other than the computer. Yeah, sometimes getting frustrated and taking it out on the rock will help. Yeah, I got some good flakes when I was thinking about that. But anyway. Here we go. Starting to look right. Starting to look like it could work for Arrowhead. Oh god, this is gonna be all right. So this is gonna be the final blow, but it wasn't. It took a good chunk off. But that's all concrete in there. Still, it's got a nice root. Right? I gotta think of a better word for how far the concrete is embedded into the stone. You know, you gotta try to get under it, pop it out of there, but it might not be pop outable. Translucency? Yeah, it's got some good color. I like these. These cherts that are color that are translucent and have some color. How do they do this with natural tools? Did they actually work the bad nodules with antlers and stuff? Of course they did. Some of them are done only with hammerstone, it looks like. It looks like in fact, I'm, I'm going to show you some, if I remember this, some real artifacts that I have that look like there's no pressure flakes on them whatsoever. It's, it looks like all hammerstone. And why hammerstone and not hammer antler? Because hammerstones are actually pretty darn good if you can find the right consistency. And it, it doesn't take long to, you know, try a couple hundred different stones that you find in the river or wherever the quartzite hammer stones are pretty common and some of them are sandstone some of them are other types of stone that will work well I don't recommend sandstone very often but it does work sometimes especially when it, you're hitting the heat treat or the obsidian. Limestone works sometimes, but I don't like using limestone hammer stones because they'll break right when I don't want them to break. When is that? 
when I need to exert the most amount of force possible on a platform and I I know for a fact that I need to exert the most amount of force possible so I'll just take it to the limit right and right when I need a lot a lot of force concentrated in one area that's when the limestone breaks that's the formula for breaking the limestone right when you need it not to break so I don't like limestone Just switch it out for another stone, man. You got you should have a collection of hammer stones, you know? Big pile of different types. <laughs> yeah, just try carrying that around with you, along with everything else you need to carry when you're moving your camp. Yeah, that's a great idea. No, you don't carry it with you. You just find them again later. You just find them again, exactly the same ones. Just you find them again. <laughs> yeah, you just find them again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, man. Never been camping before, huh? Never been in the unfamiliar territory when you don't know what animals are out there. You're just you're sitting there looking around for hammer stones out by the creek. It's funny how animals are curious. When you're curious looking for something, animals get curious. What is he looking for? Is he just being careless? He's starting to look like dinner. Yeah. A careless creature wandering the wilderness, being distracted by looking down for who knows what he's looking for. Yeah, starting to look like I need to break out the salt and pepper. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Stupid human. So yeah, no, you want you want to carry a kit with you that you can use on a regular basis without having to look around for more stuff every time you move. So you don't want a big old collection of hammer stones. That's where I'm going with that. You don't want a big collection of anything. Carrying around with you. At least I don't. I know some guys that do. They love carrying 80-pound packs into camp. Oh, gosh, it's so ridiculous. There are some things that you can make on the fly. There are some things that don't take much time that you can do that you don't, you don't, have, to, you don't have to carry. Like, you don't have to carry a camp stove. You can just make a little oven out of dirt and rocks. I know some of these metal camp stoves don't weigh anything. That's true. It still takes up space. And it still weighs something. When you add up all these things that don't weigh anything, you got about 80 things that don't weigh anything. Yeah, it's only, it's, you know, it's only like a pound. When we got 80 of those things, that's 80 pounds of weight. I used to be one of those that would carry all kinds of stuff up to the maximum limit that I could carry. Oh yeah, I could carry it, yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem. After a while it gets old, it gets really old. Not only do humans get old, but the, the the habit of bringing everything with you everywhere you go gets old. There are some things that you can take from nature reliably without putting yourself in extra danger or harm's way. Those things you don't need to carry with you. But a flint napping kit, I'm finding out, needs to be fairly specialized if you want good results, especially with hard to work with material. You do need some quality tools. Yeah, hate to admit it, but after experimenting with different materials and different techniques and all kinds of different stuff, yeah, I've got to say that, I've got to admit, 
that sometimes you just need some quality tools very carefully thought out very carefully made and very carefully maintained to achieve the results you want especially on difficult material sometimes that's all you got in a survival situation people talk about survival situations I've been uh, I've had some survival training it basically is pretty miserable right survival situations basically pretty miserable some people like the challenge I can deal with it better now better now than when I was addicted to sugar because when I didn't have my sugar I would have anxiety cravings moodiness and when you're in a survival situation and you have that kind of reaction it works against you it's not any fun you don't go do that for fun if you if your health is not good these days I could do better I think I need to try it out but I think I can do better now because I can fast easier I burn my body fat much easier than I used to be able to my metabolism was setting up for burning sugars and not fats now it's the other way around I'm not set up for burning sugars anymore so I'll take a, a drink of alcohol or I'll have a piece of candy or cake I had some cake last night because of my son's graduation from high school the graduation ceremony I had some congratulations cake head started spinning yeah it does give you a little bit of a rush and it, yeah it's, it's pretty cool but it doesn't allow you to fast you start to get cravings and moodiness and irritability and you lose your you lose your faculties you start getting all whiny and depressed you don't want to have that situation happen to you when you're trying to survive with no food but if your body is adapted to burning fat like we all still have on ourselves unless we're training to get rid of it we all have some extra fat right so that extra fat can carry us over for a week or so without having to eat any food and it gives us time to adjust or time to find our way out or do time to do things to help us survive if we can burn fat so yeah I am glad that I know how to do that now how to eat so that I'm burning fat and not sugars yeah your body can adapt to burning fat over time how long did it take for me to make that adjustment it's been since uh, 2019 2018 when I started eliminating all the carbohydrates I'm still adjusting to it so what is that three years four years I would say three years I'm still adjusting to burning fat it's a long time that's a process that is very involved there's a lot of different things that go on in between there a lot of things that your system needs to change it takes time so yeah you don't want to do it on the fly so part of I think part of prepping which I I approve of anyway anybody out there doing prepping kudos to you because you're doing more than I am as far as that goes I don't have my my uh, bug out bag or anything I've got kind of one but it's not that great I'm focusing mainly on my health right now so that I don't get sick if I don't eat but yeah I'm gonna get into that too oh yes I'm gonna get into that survival stuff do I am I gonna do it on video probably since I'm doing everything else that I'm interested in basically can't keep my mouth shut 
I gotta tell you everything I'm doing. I don't know why. Yeah, sometimes people ask me questions about this and that. Some people, I've had people visit me and they ask me, what do you think about this particular type of food for survival? And what do you think about the chances of using this kind of weapon for survival? And are bows and arrows better than atletals and atletal darts for a survival long term or short term? Doesn't matter. What's easier to make in a pinch? What's more effective over time? Okay, I'll, I'll tell you, I think that lateral darts, at lateral and at lateral dart combination should be your first option, not the bow and arrow, if you want a projectile. Uh, or just a simple throwing stick. Don't go for the complex stuff right away if you need to survive. Go for the easy stuff. Throwing sticks and at, at laterals with darts. All right, I'll finish this up on the next segment. It worked out okay. But uh, I'm out of time. It's already 31 minutes. All righty. Okay, back with no breaks. Sometimes I take a break, drink some water. No breaks this time. I got a lot to do. I'm not even I'm not going to offer this in the auction. This is just for video. If I was efficient and perfectly coherent, I wouldn't do anything but my auction stuff on video. But I looked at this piece and I said, "You know what? If I can get something out of that nasty thick throwaway thing, that'd be pretty cool." And I could talk about survival stuff. I'm glad I had a survival experience training type thing when I was in Boy Scouts back when I was about 12 years old and uh, silly me they told us bring bring some food just in case you know just bring some dried food that you can boil up doesn't weigh anything just in case can't find any food out in the wilderness and I said to myself don't need no extra food don't need no stinking food I can just eat berries and frogs. We're going near a lake anyway. Yeah. So I didn't bring any extra food. And uh, I said, okay, Patrick, have it your way. You know, when you start feeling hungry, we'll be here. We brought some extras. Don't worry. I said, okay, I'll be fine. Don't worry about me. <laughs> all right so here i go i got some acorns i said you know native americans used to eat acorns look at all these acorns there's oaks everywhere i got like 10 pounds of acorns and i'm there pounding them first day i got there i'm pounding acorns into meal and one of the guys says you know you should roast those and i said oh yeah you know what roasting them would be pretty good so I roasted them and then made them a little bit drier and they were easier to pound, or easier to pound into little bits. And then I started boiling them. Change the water out, boil again, change the water out, boil again, change the I think I had like 10 water changes and tannin was still coming out in the water that was yellow. And I said to myself, when is this water gonna get clear? When is it gonna get clear? I was like a quart size little thing. I figured, yeah, I can just boil out the tannin for each meal. Yeah, one one boiling session, one meal. I'm not doing anything else today. So yeah, there I was. And while it was while it was boiling, I, I made some traps for like little rodents or something. I made a spear for spearing frogs. And that was like the end of my first day. Didn't eat anything because the acorns water was not clear. I said, no, I can survive one day without eating. No eating today. Okay. Next day, boiling acorns. Now, I can't remember exactly 
the whole process it's not that clear but at some point I ate the acorns I said okay heck with it just give me the acorn mush I had it looked like oatmeal it's starting to look more and more like oatmeal and I love oatmeal I said okay here goes I ate a bunch of it out of that first pot oh, this is not bad it's kind of bitter you know it's, it's not that great tasting I'll add maybe a little bit of maple syrup some of the guys brought some maple syrup and they say yeah it's natural survival food yeah they had some maple syrup I put maple syrup in there and it kind of helped but not really but hey I got full cool went out check my traps nothing went out speared a couple of frogs yep got a little bitty frog legs I ate those later on that day lo and behold I had one of the worst stomach aches I've ever had in my life. Apparently I didn't boil out all the tannin. So it was starting to get to me. Or something else was getting to me. Anyway, the worst stomach ache I've ever had. So I said, I ate something bad. I don't know if I drank the stream water without properly boiling it. I mean, I don't know what it was. I was just miserable that whole night. That's what taught me that survival is not that easy. You've got to streamline the process for one, so you're not spending too much time doing stupid stuff. And number two, you've got to know exactly what you can eat and get a lot of it because you're going to need a lot of energy. So after that, I came home. Oh yeah, the next day after that big stomach ache, it went away. In the morning I said, okay, I've had enough of just natural food. My traps aren't trapping anything. Frogs taste like frogs and acorns suck. Here you go, Patrick. I knew you were gonna be hungry. So here's some macaroni and cheese. Here's some oatmeal. Here's a bunch of dried stuff, rice and stuff. And they had to rescue me. <laughs> yeah so yeah it's not as easy and you don't want to think that you can do something in the wild when you haven't experienced it oh yeah I'll be able to find something I can shoot at with my bow and arrow just gotta make the bow and arrow I'll, I'll find something to shoot it's not like there won't be anything around it's not like they won't be you know, spooked by my activities, by all the cutting and shaping and grinding and making all these noises, making my bow and chipping the arrowheads, making all these chipping noises. It's not going to spook any of the creatures away. Yeah, they're going to come and be very curious. Yeah, maybe. It's funny how sometimes their patterns of behavior don't really cooperate you think that they'll come out they do come out when they hear humans doing stuff but when they see humans looking at them like the humans not looking at the rocks the humans looking at me I'm out of there they can tell when you look at them if you're not looking at them they're not so spooked as soon as you start looking at them they go, uh -huh, this is not too cool. So I started watching channels like Eat the Weeds. One of the things my computer helped me to do is watch channels like Eat the Weeds. So I was going, this is great. I'm going to watch 200 episodes of Eat the Weeds today so I know what weeds to eat. <laughs> One day turns into two days, turns into three days, four days. Not only videos on how to eat the weeds, but videos on how to eat clay. Really? Yeah. Uh, videos on how to eat all kinds of stuff. What flowers to eat, what mushrooms to eat, what insects to eat. It's amazing.
and then I wonder why I haven't done anything. I got a stack of rock challenges to do. Why am I not doing the rock challenges? Turns out I'm, e I'm watching how to eat the weeds. <laughs> how to eat the flowers, the poor little innocent flowers. How to find truffles. How to use domestic pigs to help you find truffles. Oh yes. Got better noses than bloodhounds it seems, especially for truffles. I got so much unuseful knowledge, it's not even funny. Thank you, computer. I still like it though. I still like my computer. I still I still love it, right? Actually. Can't talk too much can't talk too much smack about my computer. Or anybody else's computer. I love it. Yeah. So yeah, this little four shaft is a bit too big for this particular one. But yeah, it looks right. It's a little bit clunky in the middle because of the uh, concrete. But the edge is sharp and serrate serratory. Can you see it? I could put some better serrations on there and make it more serratory. Why do you why are barbs a thing? People ask me, why are barbs a thing? Why, why would you have barbs, especially on a knife? Why would you have barbs on it? Well, that's a very good question, actually. Two reasons that I can think of off the top of my head. One, if you want to haft it and you want the stem, not, you know, and you want a stem, which is good for hafting, how are you going to make it on a on a piece that's already short it's kind of a waste to remove all of the edge down to where the stem the top of the stem is so you leave more of the edge and you put notches in essence it just puts the stem within the blade when you put notches in the stem goes within the blade instead of having an extra instead of needing to have extra length for the stem you just inset the stem into the blade and you don't want to eliminate the sides of your blade if you don't have to okay now on a knife why would you have barbs well that one's a little bit harder to answer right but I said there was going to be two things the other thing is uh, it, the barbs don't stay, they're not a permanent feature, especially on a knife. When you resharpen, they go away eventually. But in the meantime, you, d you still have a longer edge than you would normally have when you start. But yeah, barbs on a knife, they eventually get worn down anyway. That's the number two, I think. Number one is you, if you want to inset the stem into the blade, you put notches in and it, it naturally leaves barbs they're not really intentional okay it's part of the construction of the stem the barbs can be incidental uh, unless they're exaggerated then they're obviously intentional if they exaggerate the barbs but if they're not exaggerated and they're just there chances are they're incidental because of the or due to the construction of the stem okay and as a knife they're not really useful but they go away over time now I've seen some explanations where if there's a grinding on the barb or if the barb is ex extra thick you can use the foreshaft and your point with a barb as an at -lattle. you can stick the dart right there okay the point the barb will 
little seat inside the atlatl dart hollow and you can use your foreshaft and point as an atlatl. Now that's an interesting question or an interesting observation because I have seen dulled barbs that have maybe a little indentation up here also. That's what happens when you release the dart. It kind of crunches into the top part. If it's a piece of stone, I've tried it, and it leaves a little crunched in area right there or a damaged area just above the barb. Because I have tried using stone as a lateral hook. So that's an interesting an interesting uh, little side note on barbs on hafted points on some of them. Okay. But for the most part, barbs are incidental and they're sharp. Uh, I suppose there are things that, I, that I, they can be used for that I haven't really explored as far as cutting and butchering, I guess. Maybe cutting cordage underneath on this side. Although the top of it cuts cordage just as well or better. Um, I don't know. Anyway. I'll cut it short. I'll probably link these two videos together so that'd be just one video. I could ramble on and on and on about how to half these things. And I will do some videos or drawings on hafting options on different points. That's one request coming up. All right, so that's it for now. Good enough.